Hello and welcome to the Destiny Raid tier list video. We are going to be going over every single raid that is in Destiny, excluding the heroic raids. We're going to be looking at three main categories. Number one, the loot, gear, all of those kind of things. Number two, the replayability. And number three, the fun factor. All of those things play into these raids and where they rank on my list. So let's just jump right into it. Starting off with Crota's End. Now I could put this in the F category because this raid was really, really short, but I think I'm gonna put it in the D because it's a great strike, not a great raid. There's a couple of things though that separate it from the F category. Number one is that it introduced Black Hammer, which is now Whisper of the Worm. Basically Crota's End was awesome at the time the first couple of times you did it the replay value for me isn't fully there but the fun factor of the final fight is a lot of fun the fun factor of the final fight is a lot of fun thank you nice 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 words but the final fight is a lot of fun and I think that even though only one person gets the sword to do damage to Crota, it's very fun having your whole team shoot the shield down together, really coordinate the attack. And plus, you can solo this raid. So there's the fun factor cranked up to 11. So I'm putting that one at a D. Coming in with Crown of Sorrows, the brand new raid. So I've played this, I played this during the 24 hour raid race. And I gotta say, it was a lot of fun. We did not get the 24 hour hours done but where does crown of sorrows rank i think that the weapons in crown of sorrows are pretty lackluster i think that the weapon drops are not great you have i think three weapons in there right now in the raid itself you have an lmg you have an auto rifle and a shotgun unfortunately i don't think the loot is going to make this one in the a or the s tier the fun factor however is there and i really think that the fun factor of this raid is ultimately what will let it hold up you can do two man on the first encounter you can do three man on the second encounter and you can do two man on the final encounter which already makes it easier but it's still a lot of fun this raid requires a lot of communication between you and your teammates and i can't wait to see all the different challenges that come out of it i personally personally have a bias towards this since I was in the 24 hour race, but I think for right now, Crown of Sorrows lands itself a B. Eater of Worlds. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is my least favorite raid. I think that this raid layer is decently fun, but not not going to hold up the way that some of these other ones did. I think that the final boss fight is very boring and very, very simple. You kill a couple of ads, you shoot down these little void prisms, solar prisms, arc prisms, you shoot them down, you break the shield, you shoot a net, and then you shoot whisper at it. However, the fun factor is cranked just a little bit because you can solo this boss. Overall though, the loot pool is very, very tiny, and I think the replayability isn't really there for this raid. Unless you're getting a telesto catalyst this raid is gonna land me an f i still think all of these even if you get an f are actually pretty decent raids to begin with let me just say that coming up next we have king's fall now i played the heck out of king's fall and i love this raid this raid was very very linear in the way that you went about it you went in a straight line through the whole entire dreadnought trying to get to oryx the boss of the whole entire campaign which ultimately was the boss of the raid and i really liked they took a campaign boss and they made it a raid boss i wanted to see that since and it hasn't happened since but i still love it I do think that King's Fall though has one fatal flaw and that's what stops it from becoming an S. I think I'm going to put this in the A because of one major thing and then one minor thing. The major thing with King's Fall is that I believe King's Fall 100% the final boss Oryx is kind of a boring fight. Now don't get me wrong, the mechanics are solid. The mechanics are really fun with one person being the person who goes into the other realm, grabs the orb, slams it on the guy, and you have to coordinate that one person to do all that while the rest of the team works together on different plates, killing ogres, and making sure that everything is okay. I do think though that shooting a blight to only do a little bit of health at a time on Oryx stops this from being an S tier. I think not being able to speed up the final fight definitely takes away from the Oryx boss fight. I do think it's fun, don't get me wrong, but I think that having to slow it down just a little bit is kind of taking away from the fun factor. Now coming up next we have Last Wish. 
Man, I love this raid. Like, I love this raid a lot. I have played this raid so many times. I know all the ins and outs. I've done the low man challenges with it. I really, really like Last Wish. I think Last Wish deserves an A and not an S in my opinion, because I think there's one thing that holds Last Wish back. I think the loot isn't perfect. It's so close to being perfect, but I think the Last Wish loot just could use a little bit more love. I think the replay value is there. There's so much replayability. There's so many different ways to tackle challenges, but I think that the loot is just a little bit lackluster. Nation of Beasts is a great hand cannon. Supremacy is a great sniper, and there's a couple of other weapons thrown in there that are honestly pretty good but mostly the loot pool is just kind of lackluster. There's an auto rifle, which nobody is using an auto rifle. The scout rifle, which I have got a good roll on, but I still don't use it. It's just, it's not there. Until the meta changes to adapt for those weapons to be usable, Last Wish's weapons are a little bit lackluster. But what helps Last Wish is really the replay value. There's so many different ways to tackle these challenges, like I said. For instance, you can solo Kali, you can, two, you can three man Shiro Chi, you can two-man Morgeth, you can three-man the Vault, and you can two-man, actually you can solo Riven if you're extremely lucky, it's only been done once. And you can three-man Queenswalk, so there's a lot of fun replay value there. I just think Last Wish could use a little bit more help on the loot, although I love 1000 voices. And this one, honestly, this one is so close to being an S. It's so close to being an S. Now Leviathan. Oh boy. Leviathan. I love you, Leviathan. I really do. You hold, you, you're so close. You're so close to being an A or an S. You're so close to even being a B. But there's a couple of things that to me hold Leviathan back. Number one is the replay value. Leviathan to me gets very stale very quickly. And let me explain to you why. I think that the Callus fight is very, very good. I think it's an all around fantastic fight. However, I think that the dogs fight gets very boring very quickly. I think the bats is kind of boring, and I think that gauntlet is the worst part of any raid. It was fun the first time, but after doing it so many times, the replay value goes way, way down. Now the loot, let's talk about that for a second. Midnight Coup is probably the best hand cannon from a raid since Fatebringer, which we will get to Fatebringer. But Midnight Coup is probably the best since Fatebringer. But Midnight Coup is only held back by the fact that the rest of the weapons aren't as good. There's a couple of weapons. There's the Alona's God Sniper Rifle, and there is the Sins of the Past Rocket Launcher that are pretty good. You have those, and you also have the Inaugural Address Pulse Rifle, the Void one, that is actually very good as well. However, Leviathan also had one thing going for it, that the rolls were stagnant, and that also took away from the replay value. All of the rolls are just one type. There is no variations in rolls. You can't get a Midnight Coup with Outlaw and Kill Clip. It's just Outlaw Rampage, which is the best roll that you could want, sure. But if you wanted some other roll on one of these weapons, you're not going to get it here. And I really think that this raid could have benefited from one extra boss, maybe at the end of the gauntlet to kill, but Leviathan is going to land a C for me right now. Scourge of the Past. Man, I also really like this raid. I think that Scourge of the Past is great in the fact that it's an open env environment, and I think that Scourge of the Past is great in the fact that once it is, it, since it is an open environment, you have a lot of different ways to tackle challenges and there's a lot of fun low man challenges. There's a lot of replay value in the way that you can attack these challenges. There's a lot of ways to speed run this. This is the closest speed run that we've had to Crota ever. And it has just so much going for it in that way. However, what holds Scourge of the Past back for me is just the fact that it is kind of a meme of a raid. It's almost like Crota in the fact that it becomes so easy and so almost almost to a point where it's a joke easy. There's not really a challenge here. And when you do get to the final boss, um, the second to last encounter is very, very boring. You have three people doing a job and everybody else is just sitting on top of a roof shooting at shanks. So I think that third encounter holds it back. And I also think that the loot pool 
offers a couple of good weapons here obviously you have the the exotic anarchy which is one of my favorite weapons it definitely feels exotic in the way that it just kind of does different things to interact with the sandbox of, of the way that you play the game honestly uh, but also it introduced us to threat level which can roll with trench barrel which is one of the best shotgun perks in the game and it also can roll with surrounded which is another great perk to have on a shotgun I do think Scourge of the Past is fun. I do think it's cool. I'm going to put it in the C tier, though, just because of the couple of things I listed. That third encounter holds it back a little bit, and I think that the replay value overall, while it's good, it definitely could use a better third encounter. And the loot was a little bit lackluster outside of those two weapons. All right, Spire of Stars. Man. Okay, so Spire of Stars, the loot pool here isn't insane either. All of the Leviathan Eater of Worlds Spire of Stars don't really bring a ton of new weapons to the loot pool. Leviathan brought the most, Eater brought a little bit, and Spire brought a little bit. Spire did bring the Sleeper Simulant Catalyst, which is nice, but no new exotic was associated with Eater and Spire. I do think Eater, though, benefits from the final encounter so, so much. Did I say Eater? I meant Spire. Spire benefits from the final encounter so, so much. The first couple of encounters are rather boring, in my opinion. I think that they're rather boring. However, I do think that the final encounter is so good and requires such good communication and is actually one of the only challenging encounters in a raid that we still have to the point where I'm actually going to put it in a B. I think Crown of Sorrows and Spire of Stars are very, very comparable this way i think that the first couple of encounters are going to be a breeze for most players but however i do think that the final encounter and for crown the second to last encounter too are very very similar in the fact that they are challenge and that they're really really fun and i think that the replay value for spire and crown's final encounters are great i do think spire definitely could use a little bit of a bump but i'm very biased to spire because it was my favorite year one raid and also it has a luxurious toast emote. Let's go. Yep, Vault of Glass, get in there. Vault of Glass, man, what do I even say? Okay, let's start with the loot. You got the Fate Bringer. You got the shotgun. You got the sniper rifle. You got the rocket launcher. You got the LMG. You got the Vex Mythoclass, which was the most broken exotic in the game at the time. You had literally every single weapon. Pray Death's timepiece, the pulse rifle. You, I mean, everything. Everything was in this raid and the loot is the loot is insanely good also the locations of the different secret chests like hidden everywhere the rumored six chests because the environment was just so in-depth the replay value was there because you just wanted to explore there was ways to beat the challenges there was different people could do different roles the replay value was definitely there for vault of glass because of all the different secrets i really think it was due to all the secrets and i am very very biased to this raid because this is my first ever raid in destiny this was my first ever one that i ever did so i am going to have a huge bias to this some of you will agree with me but to me this one i have a huge bias for now finally wrath of the machine wrath you're awesome i love you so much this was the first raid that myself and some friends decided that we were going to take that Friday off and that we were all going to meet and we were going to start this raid in the morning and we weren't going to stop until we beat this raid. And by God, we almost did. <laughs> That night, one of my friends actually fell asleep on the microphone and was snoring into his mic because we were taking that long on the final boss, but Wrath is so good. Um, where do I even begin with this? The loot. The loot isn't, okay, the loot isn't the best we've ever seen, but the loot definitely was cool. You had the sniper, which was pretty good, and you had the scout rifle, which was pretty good. The hand cannon could get some good stuff on it, but the loot isn't what I'm mainly talking about here. This, to me, gets an S, in my opinion, because of the replay value. Let's talk about the final boss in particular, Axis, right? When you get into Axis's room, 
there is different ways of tackling this challenge. What I mean by this is you could use you could use Galahorn, you could use swords, you could use the cannons that are in the room, the different scorch cannons. You could use whatever you wanted, but you had to get close to him and you had to have somebody slam him first. There was also something in the room called Guardian Supercharge, where if somebody had the final buff, they could go over to one of these vents and they could slam it and it was completely optional, but it would give everybody their super back. Those kind of things I would love to see in another f boss fight. Now we thought it was a mechanic that we had to use, but it was actually something completely optional. And I would love to see that return in any of the new raids. I would love to see that return to so some kind of optional mechanic in the final boss fight. Now, as far as fun factor, I don't think there's a raid that's better than this in fun factor. I really think Wrath and Machine nailed the fun factor. That's why I'm putting it in the S tier. I think it nailed the fun factor to the point where we were doing so many different challenges. You could Sparrow into the raid if you wanted to. You could do two man challenges. You could do solo challenges. Uh, you were able to beat the final boss using swords. Swords were the best option. I mean, when's the last time we had swords being the best option in a raid? There's just so much going on for this raid. And yes, I have personal bias. This whole list is personal bias, but this is my official tier list. We will see what the red keep, wait, red keep, shadow keep. We'll see what the shadow keep has for us in fall. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you disagree with me, if you agree with me, love to hear what you're thinking over there on Twitch. I stream over there a lot. And I would also love to know what you're thinking in those comments below. And yeah, what do I say next? Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!